From the moment you open your eyes in the morning, you're editing. You know, you choose what to look at, what not to look at, what to zero in on, what not to zero in on. When you turn on your TV, when you go to see a movie, of course, you're having editing decisions made for you. People are presenting things for you, and I think it's important to always remember that. Well, epistemology is the science of how we make up our mind, how we think things, what attitude do we have towards the representations that we contain within our own head or outside our head with, with, with the world that is represented for us. So epistemology of cinema contains a gold mine of social experiences of cognition, cognitive experiences that can actually be taught to people and spread around. All these films are much more intelligent than people give them credit for. Hollywood does not do just bullshit. Even though the unconventional chronology of Memento was not invented in the editing room, what it did do is, is bring the notion and the power of editing to the consciousness of the layperson or the everyday audience. I call it cosmic editing, but you, you move people entirely out of the film to make them connect with the reality of their own presence. So there is a fantastic attempt at making us, at showing us different configuration. The Matrix is the most famous. What is the Matrix? The Matrix is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. The purpose of all modernist art is to make people aware of what they're thinking. Obviously, a major subtext of the Matrix is people being awakened from their dreamlike state in which they're very happy but very unaware. When Neo is rescued from the Matrix, it's a very powerful moment, which can be analogized into many things. Certainly, you could say that when people start realizing the power of editing, have an epiphany, not unlike being woken up from the Matrix. The bigger issue is that there's so much information coming into us all the time, so we begin to distrust the method. And I think uh, one of the big problems that we have now is how devious can you be in your propaganda, which is, you know, what editing is in some strange way. As an editor, you decide the meaning that the spectator is going to get from the combination of pictures and sounds you give. But to call that truth is already immediately a question of philosophical dimension, because what is truth? How do you tell it? Is there any all these things? Coalition troops push deeper into Iraq. They say they're now half. There is that example from the Iraq war where we saw on our televisions an image of a statue being toppled in the square in Baghdad. It looks like there's a big crowd there and there's this very intense, emotional, euphoric thing happening as Iraqi people are toppling this hated leader. But what most cameras didn't show that we got to see on our TV screens was there weren't that many people. And it was a square that had been cordoned off by American tanks. And so if you see a wide shot of that very same event, it looks like a much more meager thing that's going on. It doesn't have that strong emotional charge. It's not iconic in the way that it was shot close up. So yeah, that's an editing decision that has a very clear, not just emotional effect, but a political effect as well. I had a very clear and dramatic negative experience of that the day of the 11th of September. There was suddenly something extremely shocking, and at the same time as an example for editing, they had uh, very soon after it all happened put some very dramatic orchestral symphonic film music under the images. And it was shocking because as editing, it pushed the viewer into feeling excited and awed. There was this impression that was created by this music that gave it a film touch. So it was already entertainment. The very worst of human nature. And that's editing, because of course you combine things and doing that you create a meaning. And then as a person, as a moral being or an artistic being, you choose to keep what you have done or not. And this is what has been going on since the time of D.W. Griffith. An illusion is often what is presented to an audience. And if an audience is conditioned to accept that illusion, then you can tell an audience what you want to tell them with social, political, moral, and philosophical implications. This goes back to the Russian example and the New Wave example. 
both were interested in making films which declared their status as films to the viewer. So what better way than to use editing which just drew attention to itself so obviously. You gotta remember this is all a psychological thing that's going on here. It's a show. Give them the old razzle dazzle razzle dazzle them. The film has never been a film until it's edited. And that's so important you almost don't see it. Good editing is editing that is true to the vision of the director. Editing that is trying to help get up on the screen what he wanted in his heart. The ideal editing is editing that brings the very best out of the actors and is the most precise and clear way of telling the story. Mature editing is understanding how the big picture is more important than the individual edit. Great editing can help people look at each other after a screening with a little more understanding. And I'm happy that I was a part of that weapon. Good editing is where you are deeply moved by what you're seeing, but you're not fully aware of how it was done to you. Good editing isn't meant to be either invisible or disjunctive, but to mask the difference between the invisible and the disjunctive. <laughs> Thank you. 